Great. Um, thanks, Dennis. And uh, it's nice to be with everyone. Um, I think we got the first slide coming up momentarily. Um, and uh, yes, the, the recent event that we had at Gunn High School was a, a climate collaboration summit where we attempted to bring together um, uh, both uh, federal and state representatives and, and local representatives. Our keynoter was the Assistant Secretary of Energy and, and uh, Senator Becker presented on the state and Stanford uh, representatives with a real theme that we need to collaborate uh, and leverage our resources uh, to really achieve our, our common aims. So I did want to talk about the, the real both ch uh, challenges and the opportunities uh, associated with both green and, and aqua jobs. Uh, next slide, please. So Palo Alto, just so you give a, uh, have a context, oop, skipped, you skipped one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh Yep. Palo Alto has been uh, building on a series of uh, commitments and in environmental uh, initiatives for a long while on our on our uh, greenhouse gas side. We, we started with a, um, a strong foundation of hydropower and then uh, began ahead of the state in adopting a uh, renewable portfolio set of goals. And in part because we were ahead of the state and and really put in place um, uh, a, a set of financial goals at the same time, we've been able to achieve 100% carbon neutral electricity in 2016. And we are today 40% below PG&E's uh, uh, pricing structure. And uh, so in 2016, we also set a goal of 80% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2030. And, uh, and then this year we added a carbon neutrality goal by 2030. Next slide, please. So this just gives a, um, a, a, a breakdown of the GHG emissions. The uh, in brown was really from um, non-renewable electricity. And over on the far right, you see that the primary remainders are in our transportation and buildings and basically uh, petroleum products and natural gas in the, in the, um, in the buildings. And that is the challenge. Um, we've already reduced our greenhouse gases by 50% versus the 1990 baseline. Um, but the remainder is a lot more complicated and complex uh, to achieve. Uh, next slide, please. So where we are right now, we're, uh, we've been already leading up to right now, uh, over the last decade, facing a, a variety of factors in our, both our own electric and other utilities, our water and our gas utility. And um, because Palo Alto owns all their own utilities, we're oddly the only city in the state that owns the whole portfolio. Um, and so we've, uh, in our electric utility staffing, we are already at a very severe shortage level uh, as a result of what's been called a silver tsunami of great number of retirements, um, particularly in the engineering side. Um, over the last decade, PG&E has made huge investments uh, in their really upgrading the safety of their system, which has meant that they have basically hired away um, a lot of the uh, workforce in high voltage line workers and and power supply engineers, the engineers are dealing with with the grid system, and they've largely moved them outside of the Bay Area. Uh, and we all know that we have these huge cost of living uh, challenges. So in Palo Alto right now, we have uh, about a third of our high voltage line worker positions vacant and 50% of our power supply engineers. This is all just as we are beginning uh, the, the real ramp up in building electrification. Um, and, uh, and so we are anticipating a need to completely rebuild our uh, uh, grid system within the city uh, to essentially double its capacity over the next decade. At the same time, um, we have building and transportation electrification um, at the in kind of the job levels that Rick Bonilla was talking about, which is 
the contractors, the electricians and others related to that, uh, including even shortages of inspectors. Um, and, uh, and on top of that, we have an advanced water recycling system that we are entering into with Valley Water that has its own dimensions. Next slide, please. So this is where we're headed. We're expecting a doubling of our electrical infrastructure over the next decade, approximately. Um, uh, we also have had um, uh, leading edge adoption of reach codes uh, where we, um, uh, in the fall went from uh, not only new construction, we have all, not only all new construction of residential and commercial must be electrified, but um, any major retrofit, and we moved down the definition of a, a retrofit has to convert to electrification. And then on top of that, we have adopted our own set of initiatives, including um, a conversion to uh, home electrification, starting with a heat pump water heater program upon end of life. Um, and that is moving uh, demands into um, uh, these home electrifications. Um, but what we've really seen is that so far, the uh, problems that we face on our electrical grid are most of all because we uh, have had the highest EV adoption rate in the country. So we're somewhat ahead of other uh, communities, even the high EV rate of the, our region. And uh, as we're moving in aggressively into a building electrification, we are seeing uh, a triggering of uh, transformer upgrades that our electric utility cannot um, uh, meet the demand. And our operation side of our utility attempted at the beginning of the year to essentially halt our building electrification program, which means virtually halt our climate program. We push back, we've uh, worked out a way to be able to continue it even while we're having this piecemeal approach um, toward uh, triggering transformer upgrades uh, that we can't keep up with. Uh, the transformers aren't available and uh, the workers, uh, the, the workforce of the high voltage uh, line workers and the engineers are not available. And there is not a pipeline uh, developing them that meets the present demand and certainly not one that is meeting um, the upcoming demand that is just starting to ramp up right now. On top of that, uh, we have on the horizon all of the needs um, in utilities and in buildings uh, resulting from smart grids and smart buildings and smart vehicles. Um, and I will say that uh, one of the things that we've discovered that's triggering uh, this crisis right now is that um, EV chargers are being sold at sizes that are greater than are necessary. They're basically, EV manufacturers are telling people if you put in a 50 or 60 amp level two charger, meaning a 240 volt charger at that many amps, uh, you won't have range anxiety. You can charge your, your EV in three, four hours at home, which nobody needs, but it is completely stressing the grid, preventing the next people from being able to have home EV charging and from preventing the ability for the utility to respond to home electrification. This is a real crisis. Uh, next, please. So um, these are the, the, the power supply engineers we think are the, the most acute choke point. They're the smallest number of people in this workforce crisis, uh, but they have the longest lead time. These are baccalaureate degrees, so they're, they're four-year degrees uh, to produce a junior engineer who's just learning really the ropes upon entering a job. And right now, we don't even have a pipeline to increase uh, the, the uh, education capacity in the state for that. Similarly, on the high-voltage line uh, workers. Um, so as a result, um, we have an initiative that is in its early stages right now, working with um, Assembly Member Berman's office and Senator Becker's office to try to define the problem, um, look at uh, how we can begin to launch uh, an expansion of the programs. Uh, for instance, one possibility is to build on the 
community college baccalaureate programs so that we have local workers often from uh, uh, potentially from uh, more modest income communities who would find these as really exceptional jobs where they can have great green careers in their own communities and not have to uh, uh, migrate out to the Central Valley to, to have a, uh, uh, a good career. Uh, so next, please. So that's basically what we believe is both uh, an incredible opportunity in workforce and uh, workforce that can provide for uh, greater social and economic equity, uh, but it is also right now a crisis uh, because we and others do not have that workforce, even in, in the uh, um, electrical jobs uh, and other trade jobs. In addition to everything I've talked about, we all are facing a huge ramp up in housing production in the region uh, as a result of state mandates and city initiatives. And throughout this last upturn, we've all seen that we had a crisis in availability of that workforce, people coming from Central Valley and, and uh, residing here during the week. And the cost of housing has been significantly escalated because of the shortage of uh, contractors and predominantly subcontractors with uh, the skilled trade workers uh, that are necessary in all aspects of that housing construction. That's going to go into an explosive growth in the coming years in this region. And we, we can't wait for uh, the, the shortfall to uh, be so upon us and um, that it shuts down our ability to meet these challenges before we develop plans and pipelines to do so. So I think this is a, uh, a real uh, critical aspect of meeting our housing needs and our climate plans. Uh, the state's climate plan and the city's climate plans are all based upon this electrification. And I am deeply worried that we are entering uh, a choke point that will shut down these programs or certainly retard them significantly unless we uh, invest aggressively and immediately in uh, this workforce development. So thanks a lot. Well, thank you, Mayor Burt. Um, we do have uh, one quick question I'd like you uh, to address that's from John McKenna um, regarding specifically Palo Alto utility uh, in, and the job out owner uh, job openings. Um, he was curious about the 30 and 50% shortages, you know, what they mean in real numbers uh, that you mentioned. Yeah, I think in the, um, if I recall correctly, uh, in the high voltage uh, line workers, um, uh, we, we have something like 68 positions and uh, I think about 46 of them are filled. In the um, uh, the power supply engineers, mm -hmm. I think it's thirty something positions, and half are vacant. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's those are the approximate uh -huh. numbers here. So those numbers are far fewer people than we will need for the building electrification of the contractors. But without them, this net, the uh, the building electrification won't be able to happen. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's not just maintaining levels. It's it's expanding. Oh, it's a it, yeah. we are in a severe shortfall right now. And we're anticipating something in the neighborhood of a doubling of that need. Um, and this is part of the problem. We we're we're attempting to project the future workforce need. And there doesn't seem to be any regional or state projection on this that has been made. And the investments are not occurring in large part because we have not defined the imminent uh, need and problem. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for your work on this and appearing this morning uh, and uh, getting through the technical difficulties. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're going to hear a number of other perspectives in other areas. And uh, but basically, the takeaway is, uh, yeah, we need these. Uh, we need to fill these jobs, and they're they're good ones. And uh, so, thanks again.
Thank you.